Please remember at this time, you should avoid putting your face near to the mouth and nose of a casualty. This video will demonstrate the first eight steps you should take to help a casualty using basic life support. Firstly, you need to assess your casualty. Do this by using the primary survey. You can use the acronym DRABC to remember this. The following steps will show you how D is check for danger. Always make sure the area is safe and there are no hazards around that could cause injury to you or the casualty. Only approach if it is safe to do so. If you cannot make the area safe, call for help and wait until emergency services arrive to make the area safe. R is for response. Check your casualty's response level. Ask questions and gently tap the shoulders. Say, open your eyes. A is for airway. If the airway isn't clear, then open it by tilting the head back, using one hand on their forehead and two fingers under their chin. B is for breathing. Check for normal breathing. Remember, do not put your face next to theirs. Instead, look at the chest rising and falling only. Do this for 10 seconds. C is for circulation. Check the casualty for signs of bleeding. Only do this if they are breathing normally. Now that you've completed a primary survey using DRABC, what you do next will depend on the condition of your casualty. If your casualty is unresponsive but is breathing normally, you should place them into the recovery position. This is a position that can protect their airway until they recover or help arrives. Here are the steps you need to take to place your casualty into the recovery position. Firstly, kneel on the floor by the side of your casualty. Angle the arm of the casualty. You can do this by taking the arm that is nearest to you and position it so it's at a right angle and their palm is facing upwards. Next, you need to make the hand to cheek move. Bring the arm furthest away across the casualty's chest and place the back of their hand against the cheek nearest to you. Hold it in place there. With the other hand, now bend their farthest knee up so that the foot is now flat on the floor. Now perform the knee pull. This is where you pull the knee to roll the casualty towards you onto their side. Adjust them as necessary. Ensure the airway is open and recheck the casualty's breathing. Remember, at this time, do not place your face near to the nose and mouth of the casualty. Call 999 or 112 for emergency help. Stay with the casualty until help arrives. Keep calm and offer your casualty a reassurance. Remember, your casualty's condition could possibly get worse and they could be unresponsive and stop breathing normally. If this happens, then be prepared to use basic life support and start CPR. So, if your casualty is unresponsive and is breathing normally, you should place them in the recovery position. However, if you establish from the primary survey that they are unresponsive and not breathing normally, you should follow these steps to give CPR. Ask a helper to call 999 or 112 uh, for emergency help whilst you start CPR. Ask the helper to find and bring a defibrillator if there's one available nearby. Ask your helper to put the phone on loudspeaker and hold it towards you so they can maintain a two meter distance. If you're on your own, use the hands-free loudspeaker on a phone so you can start CPR while speaking to ambulance control. Do not leave the casualty to look for a defibrillator yourself. Just start CPR. Before you start CPR, use a towel or piece of clothing to lay it over the mouth and nose of the casualty. Start CPR. Kneel by the casualty and put the heel of your hand on the middle of their chest. Put your other hand on top of the first. Interlock your fingers, making sure they don't touch the ribs. Keep your arms straight and lean over the casualty. Press down hard to a depth of about five to six centimeters before releasing the pressure, allowing the chest to come back up. 
the beat of the Bee Gees song Staying Alive can help you maintain the right speed. At this time, do not give rescue breaths. Continue to perform CPR until either emergency help arrives and takes over, or the casualty starts showing signs of life and starts to breathe normally. Or you are too exhausted to continue. Remember, if you are exhausted and there is someone else nearby, you can change over every one to two minutes with minimum interruptions to chest compressions. Or if defibrillator is ready to use. If a helper returns with a defibrillator, ask them to switch it on and follow the voice prompts while you continue CPR. Wherever possible, the helper should maintain a distance of two meters. It's worth noting that if you're unable to do CPR yourself, then you can instruct someone else to do CPR using the steps you've learned.